told you I wasn't ready yet. Hey, for First News, I'm Chris. And I'm Micah. We have an exciting mission field month. So, that's a mouthful. That is a mouthful. So, if you haven't got your missions envelope, you need to go by the wall and pick those up. Um, that's going. Right out there. Today, you can stop by the table by the elevator. We have Casa Hogar set up, mm -hmm. which we always do the Christmas gifts for the orphanage down there. Yeah. So you can go and there will be a sheet there. You can find a child and volunteer to bring certain things. There you go. And his families. And so that's always a great mission project. A wonderful Christmas so, thing. Yeah. yeah. And Thanksgiving's coming. Here we go. In fact, be, speaking of Thanksgiving, yeah. So. I've been making room. So here's, here's what we need. The food pantry on Friday will be handing out frozen turkeys, frozen turkeys, yeah. and Thanksgiving fixings to our families that come through the That's food right. pantry. So, if you'd like to donate stuff this week, man, we could use box mashed potatoes, box stuffing, non-perishable items, mix. I mean, canned goods, canned goods and those can be brought corn. anytime this week. That's right. That's right. And you can bring those up to the church office. Now, let's say you're uh, able to give a frozen turkey to Ooh. a family in need. When do we drop those off? That's a great question. Now, frozen turkeys, due to limited freezer space, right. can only be dropped off this coming Friday between 8 and 9 a.m. Makes sense. That's the day we give them out. We don't have a lot of room to freeze them. And if you exactly. can't give a thought out turkey. That's right. That's right. So, you know, you'll get sick. If you so know. bring a frozen turkey Friday morning, 8 to 9, and uh, that will help us uh, hand out the food pantry. Then Sunday, <laughs> November the 21st, it's going to be a great Sunday. We are having our agape meal, mm -hmm. but we're changing the time for that service. Yes. Okay. 9.30 will be Bible study. 9.30. And then 10.45, we will have one combined worship service. And then after that, we're going to be the best Baptist thing we could do and go across the street, the rec center, and eat. Praise so, God. So mm -hmm. make sure you note the time change. 9.30 Bible study, one combined service at 10.45. And I heard we have another guest preacher that day. Yeah, uh, a guy I haven't heard of. Uh, Brian Bri Hill? Brian Hill? Brian Hill? I don't know. Grassy Hill? We'll see. So, hey, we hope that you enjoy your emissions month and get ready for all these things coming up. But for Hey First News. Brain. That is his name. Oh. Brain Hill. I'm Chris. And I'm Micah. Well, we are so glad that you're here to worship. We also did mention in there, Live Nativity is coming the 1st of December. And so they've got a table set up. We're still looking for people with cast to do that or if you want to help behind the scenes. So go stop by. You can't miss a table. Uh, Baby Jesus is there. You can sign up. And so please go sign up to support that the first week of December. Uh, we are so glad that you're here to worship with us. If you're visiting, there's a card in the pew in front of you. If you will place that and fill it out and place it in the offering plate, or if you're a first-time visitor, you can take it down to the blue wall down by the nursery, and we have a special gift to give you. And so we're so excited to get to worship today. You are in for a special treat today. Aaron Green is here today with us. Aaron is the CEO of South Texas Children's Home. I wore our golf classic shirt. We were able as a staff to go uh, just this past month and get to play golf, and they do a great job. Uh, ironically, I'll let him explain this when he comes up. We played golf. I won't mention which team won first place, but it was his. I, <laughs> just saying, Aaron. Anyway, but uh, they do a great ministry. Uh, they do the stuff with our, when we go to the Dominican, and he's going to share some of that of what they do. A wonderful organization. And so, Aaron, thank you for being here today. We're looking forward to hearing from you. So as we start worship, let's join in prayer today. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity that we have to come as a family before you, just to lift up our voices and give you the worship that you deserve, Lord. Lord, as Aaron comes today, that you will just speak through him, Lord, that you will deliver a message to us so we can continue to hear how great you are and just refuel us for this next week as we go to show others who you are, Lord. Lord, for everything we have coming up in our church, we just ask that you will move in a mighty way, that it will bring glory to you, Lord, uh, that we can just continue to show others what a loving and merciful and great God that you are, Lord. We thank you for this time as a family before you to worship. It's in your wonderful name that we pray. Amen. Let's try that again. 
Our, our twos became fours and our fours became twos. Here we go. that you'll stand with us this morning as we sing what a friend we have in Jesus
morning. You can do it in a minute after they're, after they're done. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm glad you're here this morning. I've got a question for you. Do you know what this is? A sponge. A sponge. And what do you do with the sponge? What do you do with it, Hayden? You clean dishes. What do you do? Does it clean the dishes very well if it's really a dirty sponge? No, it doesn't work if it's dirty. It needs to be clean. It does work if it's dirty. But even if you get it wet, sometimes there's so much gunk in it that it spreads the gunk, right? So, well, no, this is just a sponge. Okay, so sometimes what happens if my sponge gets wet and I squeeze it? Whatever is in it comes out, right? Because what if there was hot chocolate in it? Ew, is that gross? Uh, what would happen? Would water come out if hot chocolate was in it and I squeezed it? Hot chocolate would come out, right. So I want you to look right here. If I got the sponge and I put it in water, what's going to happen when I squeeze it? Water. But what happens if I take it and I squeeze the water? This is hot chocolate, by the way. And I squeeze it in the hot chocolate it gets cold yeah does it also dilute it right what was darker got lighter right so what if I take my hot chocolate Olivia can you take the, or here there you go that's better okay and then what happens if I squeeze the hot chocolate into the water that's gross. You want to drink that water? No. no, you don't? Well, I don't either. But here's what I want you to think about this morning. So, do you ever get squeezed like a sponge? No. You don't? Well, let's think a little bit about that. What happens when you get angry? Do things spew out of you when you get angry? Yep, right, Caroline? It's like squishing a sponge and everything comes out. Whatever's inside comes out, right? What about when bad things happen and your emotions just go crazy? Super sad or anxious? Sometimes, whatever, or always, whatever is inside is what comes out, right? So if you are filled with God's Holy Spirit and his word will bad things come out when you get squeezed no. no it's good things the clear water is our goal as christians that we need to be filled with his spirit and his word so that when we get squeezed that's what comes out right Maybe the fruits of the Spirit, like what's listed in Galatians, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, all those good things, when we are filled with him, that's what comes out when bad things happen to us. Okay, um, I want to read M Romans chapter 5, verse 1 through 5, and I'm going to read it off of a paper because it's printed bigger than my Bible. Okay, so, um, and I don't have my glasses with me. So listen real close. Therefore... Since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of highest privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice too. When we run into problems and trials, tribulations, for we know that they are good for us. They help us learn to endure. And endurance develops strength of character in us. And character strengthens our confident expectation of salvation. And this expectation will not disappoint us. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. God is good and he loves us. And he sent his son for us. And we should be thankful in all situations, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So that when we're 
when things happen, we know that we can depend on him, right? And we're filled with him. Okay, let's pray. I've got little sponges for y'all so that you can remember that you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that when you come into situations, you're going to remember that you should be filled with his word. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day you've given us. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you sent your son Jesus and that you um, fill us with your Holy Spirit when we ask to follow you. Heavenly Father, I just ask that we stay in your word so that when we come into situations that that is what flows from our heart, that your love, joy, peace, and patience just comes flowing abundant. Thank you for so many blessings that you've given us. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Sing with us about God's peace. There's a peace I've come to know. Though my heart and flesh may fail, there's an anchor for my soul. I can say it is well. Jesus has overcome, and the grave is overwhelmed. The from 
this today. As we sing, it is well with my soul. As we enter into a time of thanksgiving, I'm always uh, remembering the things that God has blessed me with. And uh, even though we may have trials, uh, we always uh, give up our thanks to God. 
First Thessalonians 5, 18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Bow your heads with me and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, and we thank you for everything that you have blessed us with. We have so little to return to you, and we know that we owe so much more for what you've done on the cross for us. Be with the gift, be with the giver, so that your kingdom will grow. We ask these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
Since 1952, Healing Hearts and Sharing Hope has been the focus of Stitch Ministries' nine distinct ministries. From residential care, counseling, and life skills training, to strengthening communities and international, Stitch Ministries has been working to show God's promise of hope and love to everyone. It all started with our Homes for Children on the Booth Campus, where our focus has been caring for children who otherwise may not have anywhere to go. Children on the Booth Campus live with their house parents who were able to show them love and support. On-site counselors and caseworkers are there to help the children's hearts heal and equip them to face what life has thrown at them. Our Homes for Families at the Marshall Ranch Campus exists as a resource for single mothers and their children during times of crisis. The family is able to stay together or be reunified while transitioning into independence. We are able to provide the mothers a safe place to call home where they are supported physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Across Texas, there are children and families in need of help sorting through the challenges of life. Stitch Ministries Family Counseling provides clinically excellent and distinctively Christian counseling. Our counselors come alongside individuals and families to address their needs. Equipping individuals to better understand God's purpose for their jobs and their finances is the intent of the Faith and Work and Faith and Finances Ministries. Faith and Work provides people the opportunity and tools to achieve their full potential in their work. Faith and Finances helps individuals discover what the Bible says about money and helps them learn how to break cycles of personal financial crisis. These courses are designed to help anyone in every stage of life. The objective of our pastor care ministry is to strengthen and replenish the well-being of our church leaders, utilizing counseling and supplying guest preachers when time away is needed. Ministry consulting provides help to organizations that are closely aligned with our purpose and values by providing resources to enable them to operate more effectively. Our family support ministry works to find long-term sustainable solutions for families in need. Reaching out to make a difference beyond our borders is the mission of our international ministry. Individuals, churches, and other organizations throughout Texas and the United States are joining together to assist in mission projects in the Dominican Republic, Costa Rica, and Peru. The mission projects include construction work, medical clinics, vacation Bible school, teaching and pastoral conferences, and others that promote ongoing long-term success in these countries. For Stitch Ministries, healing hearts and sharing hope is not just words. It is a way of life and a daily goal across all nine ministries. To learn more about Stitch Ministries and to find out how you can help, go to www.stchm.org. Good morning. It is great to be here with you all today. Um, unfortunately, my, my wife and children couldn't be here. Uh, somehow in the planning, we failed to realize that the Texas Baptist annual meeting starts today in Galveston, for those of you that may be familiar with that group, and we'll be there through, I will be there through Tuesday, and uh, they could not get away to Galveston uh, with everything that they have going on, but it's, it's great to be here. Uh, First Baptist Church, Corpus Christi, and Stitch Ministries have been two organizations that have been uh, intimately linked together uh, for many years. It's been really interesting to watch. Uh, no matter the era of the church or the pastor or what's going on, uh, we have always been in partnership. Now I can tell you here lately that partnership has increased and has got it, gotten more intimate. Uh, some of you know that Pastor Brian is actually on our ministry's board. Uh, so he works with us very closely. I've, I've gotten to know him very well and uh, he's been a real blessing to me. Uh, so I'm excited and glad uh, that he's on sabbatical and uh, that I get to be the, the last person that speaks before he comes back. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing exactly, uh, but I know that you all will be glad to have him back after his time away. Uh, so we love Pastor Brian. Uh, there are so many other ways that we partner and connect. Many of you have been with us on trips uh, internationally. Uh, I saw in the bulletin where uh, there's a trip that we're trying to work together on to go to Costa Rica. Many of you have been to the Dominican Republic. Uh, and so that's another, certainly, uh, a point of connection and partnership. You may also know that we actually have a counselor here in your church uh, three days a week. Uh, so if there are things that are going on that someone may need to speak to a counselor about, uh, we actually have someone that's here in your church to help meet those needs. 
Uh, we also teach a faith and finance class on Wednesday nights, I believe, here in the church is another thing that we do. And so the list actually goes on and on of the relationship and the partnership. Uh, however, I know there may be some of you here today that may not be familiar with who we are or what we do. Uh, we still get referred to a lot as South Texas Children's Home, and that's what STITCH stands for. But as you saw in the video and as you've heard me spoke, uh, you can understand why we, we don't really refer to ourselves that much anymore that way because there's so much more that God has asked us to do. Um, many people do think about our residential program, uh, our campus uh, that is outside of Beeville. And that is a program uh, that is how we started uh, almost 70 years ago. And so we still operate that program to this day, but the Lord has seen fit for us to uh, start new programs and, and, and do different things. Um, I don't need to tell you this, but families are under attack. Families are under attack in our country today. I wish I could stand before you and say, hey, listen, I see the need for our counseling ministry. We're actually pulling back. We don't really think that people need uh, that much help anymore. Or our residential programs aren't growing. Um, or that we don't see uh, the need for family healing and family restoration. I wish I could stand before you today and tell you that that's what we see. But unfortunately, uh, we see uh, the opposite. Uh, I believe that the, the family is the building block of society. You take the family unit away and break it apart, and your society is heading toward disaster. I, I personally believe that. We see it every day. We see it. Now, no family's perfect. Uh, we all have our stuff that we deal with. There's no question about that. But we see our world trying to solve the family problem through services and programs that aren't rooted in Scripture. They're not rooted in a personal relationship with our Heavenly Father. And as long as we do that, I think we're, we're missing a key component of what the solution is for families today. Uh, your foundation has to be in Christ. And that's what we believe and that's what we teach. Uh, we're not a social service organization. We're a ministry. Uh, it's just our connection to families is through social service type programs. But we're 100% we're a ministry. Um, it didn't say it in the video, but there are three foundational principles that we started uh, with and were founded on 70 years ago, and those still hold true today. The first is that we uh, have never had any debt in the history of the organization. So if you go to our campuses, we actually have three campuses now. We added a campus on uh, in July of this year. We now have our, what we call our Blue Bonnet Ranch Campus. If you get our publications, you've seen about, you've seen about that program. But there are significant campuses and there's never been any debt in the history of the organization. That's just a foundational principle. Another is we take zero state or federal government dollars. Okay, so like in our, in our child uh, program, uh, we have in the past taken kids that were placed by the state. Uh, so kids that have been removed from their home because it's an unsafe place for them to be, uh, we have taken those kids in, but it was under a no-pay uh, agreement. Um, because, again, we want to be able to, to minister to those kids that come in. Um, and, and the last is we do not allow one's ability to pay for the program or the service, keep them from receiving it. So an example of that is we've had kids that have come into our residential programs at three years old. Uh, they stay with us till they're 18, some of them, and then they go to college. Uh, we have 15 kids in college right now, and college is all over. Uh, we have three that are working on their master's program, and them nor their parent nor their guardian ever have to give us one dime for that to happen. We're very unique, and in that, in that, that's how we operate. You may say, well, how do you do that? Um, how can you, you know, be able to generate that sort of uh, revenue or income, I should say, where you can provide that sort of care? And I would say because of generosity of churches like First Baptist Church Corpus Christi, uh, because of generosity of many of you that are here personally that help us to do what God has called us to do. And I believe that God has allowed us to do this because we've stayed so faithful uh, to what he's called us to do 70 years ago. There are a lot of organizations that started out just like us. I could name organizations. I'll not do that today. But through the years, they've crept into not, be, not being ministries anymore. They've, they've crept into different models of care and, and receiving funding from places that control how they run their programs. And now they could be a very good social service program, but they're not a ministry. That's not us. 
Uh, there are so many connections to this church. I mentioned a couple. Uh, many of you know Joanna Berry. She's our VP that's over our family ministries and our international programs. I know her and her husband, John, attend church here. I was visiting with Kathleen Bevel a moment ago. She has been on our ministries board previously. I mentioned to you that Brian is, is currently on that board. Uh, the late Dr. O.B. and Virginia Lee Vaughn have been um, a huge blessing to us through the years and such great friends. And so many, so many other connections. You know, when I was talking to some of our staff about me being here, one of our staff that's been with us for 35 years told me this. He said, no matter what was going on, if there was a need, then we could reach out to First Baptist Corpus Christi and they would get involved. They would come teach classes at our Homes for Families program. They would do this and they went on a long list of various things of ways that you guys have been a blessing through the years. Uh, so I'm here to say thank you first and foremost. I'm here to say thank you for for your commitment to support us. You may never meet those children or those adults that you saw on that video. You might never even know a child or a family that's blessed by what we do. Because of your support, though, you're a part of their story. You're a part of, of God intervening in their lives. And so thank you on behalf, of, on behalf of them. Now, I could go on talking about what we do at Stitch Ministries for a very long time, but I also feel it's important that I do bring uh, a message to you today. Um, I joke that I am not a professional pastor, um, but I'll do my best, so y'all uh, work with me on this. As I was sitting listening to the great music and even to the, the children's sermon this morning, there was a, there was a theme that was there, and, and I recognized it because I knew what I was going to be speaking about. Um, but it's amazing when we look, for this, look at this topic how often we find it. And what I want to talk to you about is, today is, is joy. True joy is, is how I would refer to it. Um, I was watching a football game yesterday, and obviously I was thinking about what me being here and, and what I was going to say, and this commercial popped up. I don't watch a lot of commercials. I actually don't watch a lot of TV. The only commercials I watch are during sporting events, generally. Um, and so this commercial came on, and it was a commercial for a sporting goods store. That's what it was. And there was a ping pong table. Okay, there was a ping pong table and it showed this dad with his little kids and they're learning how to play ping pong and then it shows like Christmas time and they're putting stuff on it and under it and then they take it off and then it's, this ping pong table like is, is, is shown in like 45 seconds, maybe not even that long, through like 60 years of their life. And what they were saying was this ping pong table was the source of joy in our family for years and years and years and years. And I was looking at it and... and my kids and I and our family sometimes play ping pong and I thought man that's not how ping pong goes in my family there's people there's people throwing paddles we're screaming we're yelling we're talking about rules and who violated this rule and you can't do that and I'm like I never thought the source of joy was ping pong I like playing but that's taking it a little bit far at least in my opinion now for some of you ping pong enthusiasts I apologize about that reference but my point is if we if we watch what the world is showing us, we're always trying to be shown how we can attain joy. Watch a commercial about a car. They're driving in this serene forest and they've got the windows down and the birds are singing and there's all these great things happening and all that. Well, I have to have a, I, I got a confession to make, so y'all just bear with me on this one. Uh, one of the places where my joy is lost the most is in the car. <laughs> I'm going to get a little more personal with you guys. It's in the car in Corpus Christi, Texas. <laughs> hey, I've lived a lot of places, really, I have. I've traveled the world, a lot of places in the world, and I love driving in foreign countries. When I go to the Dominican Republic, I love to drive in the Dominican Republic. If you've been, you may find that surprising. You might find that surprising. It's a little chaotic, but it's kind of controlled chaos, and it's, I, I actually really enjoy it. When I come to Corpus Christi, I do not enjoy driving in your traffic. I do not. It's like every time I come, something pretty significant happens, you know, and somebody does something or I don't do something that they think I should have done. And so that, that, that joy is something that is robbed from me, maybe, hopefully just for a moment as I'm driving in Corpus Christi. There's a lot that Scripture says about joy. Um, there really is. Um, Scripture references and talks about joy um, quite a bit. 
What we know is that joy is something that I, I believe most people want. And I think we look in all kinds of different places to, to find that joy. Think about yourself in different stages of your life. Maybe when you were uh, a kid. And I do this with my kids all the time, okay? We'll, we'll be having a conversation, and maybe it's July, and I'll say, hey, what did you get for Christmas last year? And they'll look at me. My kids look at me like I've lost my mind a lot, so I get used to that. But they look at me like, what are you talking about? I was like, what did you get for Christmas last year? <clears throat> and they sit there for a little while, and they kind of think, and well, I, I think I got this, or I think I got that. And I say, do you remember the joy that you had on Christmas morning when you got that thing, whatever it was? Well, yeah, I was, I was really happy. Do you still have that joy today about that thing? You don't even remember what it is. You don't even know what that thing was. So I can answer the question, you don't have that joy. You could think of maybe when you were in high school or you were trying out for the sports team or you were trying out for a band or choir or, or whatever it was, and you thought, man, if I, can just, if I can just do this, if I can just have this, then that's going to bring me the joy that I need. I'm going to be happy if I can do that. You may think, may think about getting to uh, go into college and what college might accept you. And if I could just get into the right college with that my friends are going to, then I'm going to have all this joy. It's going to be great. You might think about your profession or your career and how much joy that, that might bring you as well. Obviously, what I'm here to say today is there are things that, that can bring us um, what actually Max Licato calls contingent joy. He has two terms that he uses. He uses the term contingent joy, and he uses the term courageous joy. And those are two dramatically different things. I'll talk a little bit about those in a moment. But I do want to uh, read some scripture. Um, I find Peter to be one of the most interesting uh, people in the Bible. Uh, Peter was just an interesting guy. Uh, we probably all have a couple Peters in our churches, and sometimes they're an unbelievable blessing. And then sometimes, as Jesus told Peter... Do y'all remember when Jesus uh, referenced Peter as Satan? He said, get behind me, Satan. He was talking to Peter. So don't do that in a business meeting. I'm asking, don't, don't refer to someone as, as Satan or tell them to get behind you because you don't like what they're saying. But, but Peter was an interesting guy. Um, I, f I found this information. Uh, Peter was actually, I'm sorry, Jesus actually rebuked Peter more than any other disciple. He rebuked him more than any other disciple. Peter was the only disciple that actually rebuked Jesus. So he, he didn't mind being rebuked maybe, but, but he kind of got on to Jesus sometimes. Peter also confessed Jesus more boldly and more publicly, many believed, than any other disciple. He also denied him. Uh, in a very forcible way. Jesus praised Peter more than any other disciple as well. So it's interesting to, to, to let's see what, what Peter has to say um, about the topic. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start in 1 Peter chapter 1, ver, uh, verses 3 through 8. Peter starts by saying this. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has given us a new birth because of his great mercy. We have been born into a new life that has a confidence which is alive because Jesus Christ has come back to life. We have born in, been born into a new life which has an inheritance that cannot be destroyed or corrupted and can't fade away. That inheritance is kept in heaven for you since you are guarded by God's power through faith for a salvation that is ready to be revealed at the end of time. Verse 6, you are extremely happy about these things. Even though you have to suffer kinds of trouble, all kinds of trouble for a little while now. The purpose of these troubles is to test your faith as a fire tests how genuine gold is. Your faith is more precious than gold, and by passing the test, it gives praise, glory, and honor to God. This will happen when Jesus Christ appears again. Although you have never seen Christ, you love him. You don't see him now, but you believe in him. You're extremely happy with joy and praise that can hardly be expressed in words as you obtain the salvation that is the goal of your faith. So the context there, most of us know the story. Uh, this is when God's chosen people had been kicked out of the land. And so these are not people who were in a really good place, okay? These were people whose land had been stolen. Their possessions had been destroyed, many of them. So and he's, he's, he's talking to 
them about how faith in Christ should bring us joy. Faith in Christ should bring us joy. I believe our greatest witness is how we treat people. Okay, and this is another. I'm, it's this confession morning for me. So, you know, customer service, uh, you know, we, sometimes we have unrealistic expectations of customer service. I have learned that I can't expect myself from someone else. You can't expect how you would treat somebody in the drive through line to be the way somebody else is going to treat you. Okay? Let's not expect that. Over this past year and a half, we've had, uh, many of us feel like we've had a lot that's been taken from us. I think about your church and some of the, the difficulties that you guys have been through. Um, it hasn't been an easy past year and a half. Um, I understand that. It hasn't been for us as an organization at, at Stitch Ministries either. Um, there's time that, with loved ones that we've lost, um, that we'll never get back. Um, there's loved ones that we've lost, that we'll never get back. But I think we have to go back and look at our joy and try to find out where it comes from. Again, Max Licato talks about contingent joy. And he says that means that you always say, I'll be happy or I'll be joyful when this happens. If I just get enough money in my retirement account to retire, I'm going to be happy. Life's going to be great. And then the first day of retirement, you're looking around like, what am I going to do? I'm not happy. I don't have purpose. I don't know what the next step is for me. That's contingent joy. But courageous joy is a joy where we say we know there are going to be challenges. We know we're going to face difficulties. We know through what Peter told us that we'll be refined like gold by the fire. That doesn't sound like a joyful experience to me. That sounds like a, a difficult experience, certainly for me. And, and I know that we've all been there. Courageous joy, however, will turn us into strong, resilient people. It makes us focus on Jesus and Jesus alone. If we have that courageous joy, what happens on this earth is not something that can get us down. In John chapter 16, we, we read also about sorrow being turned to joy. John chapter 16, verses 31 and 33 says this, Jesus responded to them, Do you now believe... Look, an hour is coming and has come when each of you will be scattered to his own home. You will leave me alone, yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. You will have suffering in this world, but be courageous, I have conquered the world. So we go back to that. There will be suffering. So, so we've heard it two places now. There is no such thing as a joyful life without difficulty. It is not easy, and it is never promised to be. As a matter of fact, we are told again that there will be difficulties. Rick, really quickly, I want to share some practical thoughts about joy. We can talk about joy and our joy coming from our Heavenly Father, and obviously that's true. But so many times I think we don't figure out how that changes the daily walk. We still are going to get frustrated. We still are going to get aggravated. And so what can we do day by day to keep that joy? I would call it the practical side of joy. I'm in Proverbs 3 right now, so this isn't a Bible drill. You don't have to look it up if you don't like, but um, I think it's important. Proverbs 3 verse 1 says, My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. Verse 2, for the length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. And here is an important foundational principle, I believe, of joy I know that I think I have missed some in the past. Verse 13 in the same chapter. Blessed is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gets understanding for the gain from her. Now, this is interesting. Wisdom is referred to as a her. Now, you know, you can draw what conclusion you want from that. For the gain from her is better than the gain from silver, and her profit is better than gold. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire can compare to her. We're talking about wisdom. Long life is in her right hand, and in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peaceful. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Those who hold fast to her 
are called blessed. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. Wisdom is the key to joy. I pray for wisdom a lot. Um, I pray for discernment a lot. We should be seeking wisdom daily. How do you decide what to do? The hope is that you're seeking wisdom from God. So again, I'll give you three practical suggestions for how we find that wisdom. Well, James 1, 5 tells us pretty simple. What do we do when we want wisdom? We ask for it. We pray about it. We ask for it. Are you asking for wisdom? Are you doing it daily? How many times a day? I encourage you to ask for it. I know I do. So the first thing, ask for wisdom. The second thing, study the Bible and know the Word of God. If we don't know His commandments, if we don't know His teaching, then how can we know how to live a life that is going to honor Him? And the third is do our best to live out His commandments. Colossians 3.16 tells us to let the Word of Christ dwell richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. As we talk about joy and, and that long-lasting joy, um, again, I, I want you to understand that what, what we do at Stitch Ministries, we see families that um, many times are on their, their last leg, or that joy has been um, robbed for various, very legitimate reasons. One of the things we hear most, most often from kids in our care is, how can you care about me when my own parents don't? How can I have house parents that want what's best for me when my own biological uh, parents abandoned me, neglected me, abused me, all these things? And that's a hard one to answer. That's a tough one to answer. Uh, through time, uh, through showing them that we're going to be there for them, uh, we're able to see God work in amazing ways in their lives. Listen, I'm sure there are some of us that are here today that are struggling today. You're struggling with joy. You're struggling with knowing what decision to make about really important things that are going on. So we've talked about joy and we've talked about wisdom. Those are keys for us as believers. Is that if those are struggles <clears throat> excuse me, that you're having, I would love to pray with you about those joys. Maybe you're struggling with finding a church home. Maybe you're struggling with your faith. Uh, again, I know that Pastor Brian would be an awesome person to visit with about these things as well as well as Chris and Stephen um, and other staff here at the church. Um, so I would like to close us with a word of prayer, um, but I would really like for you to think about wisdom and joy and what are the things that bring you the most joy? I think about grandparents with grandkids. What are those healthy things that bring you the most joy? And get involved in those. Teaching Sunday school classes brings some people unbelievable joy. Musicians. Oh my goodness, what a blessing your musicians are uh, today. What a great job you guys did. Find ways you can lift up the Lord and be joyful and stick with them. Please stand while I close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to be here together. Uh, we thank you for how you reveal yourself to us daily, hourly, sometimes minute by minute. Lord, we understand that the, the struggle is a real part of, of what you've called us to endure, but help us to not lose our joy. Help us to stay focused on you. Help us to see ways we can be joyful in the difficult times. Help us to be wise Help us to be discerning. Uh, help us to find situations and scenarios that rob us of our joy and help us to tell those things to get behind us. We don't want any part of them. Help us to find people that are going to lift us up and be joyful with us and celebrate with us. And Lord, I pray for those today that may be struggling with joy. Uh, help us all to find those ways where we can be plugged in, and be feeling the joy that only you can bring us. Help us to seek out that courageous joy. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Aaron, thank you for being here today. Thank you for challenging us. I know that if you have any questions about anything that South Texas Children's Home does, Aaron would love to speak with you. Any way that you can come alongside them and do ministry, uh, he would love to and talk to you. So uh, I'm sure he can hang around and do that. And so once again, thank you for being here. Thank you for challenging us. Thank you for your ministry and allowing us to partner with you. So, okay, next week, Bible study is what time? 930 and one worship service at what? 1045. Okay. Everybody got that. Okay. If you show up here at 845, we're just going to find something for you to do and set up. Right, Johnny? There you go. We warned you. Here we go. Brian will be back. Uh, he will be back here. Uh, should be here Wednesday night, but he will be back. And I know it'll be a great time as a family as we worship together and then head over for an agape meal. So, hey, let this week go and be blessed and show others who he is this week. Thanks for being here. Johnny, sing us out.